What's up everybody, Alan Hortz, Enzo Nihilab. Today's video is about the second part of the Cyborg project, silicone prosthetics made in 10 hours during Act Belgian 2017. These prosthetics can monitor the earth magnetic fields or even notify me if I have a bad posture by vibrating a little bit. This second part shows you how I designed the overall shape of the prosthetic and the enclosure with Autodesk Fusion 360 and the 3D printers I have used. Remember, we use this Metaware C Pro that we put in the silicone prosthetics and we use this Raspberry Pi 0W with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built-in. We put this in our pocket and we are connected to the world. One thing I would like to show you is uh, a tool that I use all the time, which is a digital caliper from eye gauging. This one is really amazing. Um, it's a must uh, if you'd like to do 3D design and 3D printing. Um, please find the link to this product in the description below. Let's go for the making of. I start by drawing the overall shape of the silicone prosthetic. Then, I use it as a canva in order to create the mold that I will use to cast the silicone. I simply replicate the shape by sketching some lines in Autodesk Fusion 360 and I apply some fillets to round off the angles. The mirror function let me duplicate the right part without effort. When the shape is complete, I use an offset that represents the outer edge of the mold. I extrude both the shape and the mold, and I cut the mold's body with the shape body. Done. After having 3D printed the mold, it is time to cast the silicone. To do it, I use platinum silicone compounds, a pot and a spatula to mix and pour the silicone into the mold. Set up the place to work freely. First, place the compound A into the pot. Then, put the same amount of compound B. Use the spatula to mix correctly two compounds. When it's done, your mix is ready. Pour it into the mold and fix the holes carefully with the spatula. Wait 30 minutes for the silicone to cure and remove it from the mold. It is time to model the enclosure. I first start with the components, the coin cell and the coin cell holder. I use the CED files from Ambient Lab in my own design so that I don't have to model the secret. I also model the vibration motor. I rearrange the component and I start designing the enclosure. At this stage, it is really important to make sure the components will fit and I do a first physical check of the enclosure. In this case, I need more room for the wires to flex properly. So I modify my design, I create the caps, the logo and the base. I use the form tool and flex resin to print the enclosure. My enclosure is now flexible and will follow my body movements. Because the devil is in the details, I also created a second mold to cast a light diffuser. Thanks for watching everybody. If you liked the video, please share it. If you'd like to see more video, more crazy video, more crazy experiments from the lab, subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you.